Sentiamo parlare spesso della Nord Corea, ma quasi mai ne parlano persone nordcoreane. Io ho letto un libro, si intitola La ragazza dai sette nomi e l'ha scritto una donna nordcoreana. E quando ho scoperto che questa donna sarebbe stata ospite della mitica fondazione Kennedy, ho deciso di incontrarla. You have changed several names and uh, multiple identities. I would like to learn how to pronounce in the right way the name you chose to use today. Can you teach me to pronounce it right? Hyun Soli. Hyun Soli. Hyun Soli. Perfect. This isn't the name by which you were registered at birth. You just chose this name, right? Mm? Explain to me what it means and why you choose it. I was called Hyun Soli because uh, No, Hyun means sunshine because uh, the reason I gave Hyun, you know, I don't want to live in the shadows, in the darkness anymore, which I had enough in my life as a refugee status. So by giving sunshine, I want to live in the bright. And then Seo means good luck. That's my hope and wish. That's why I gave Hyun Seo. And Lee is a family name. You have been an illegal immigrant. What do you think of those arriving in Italy or Germany today without uh, documents? All refugees in vulnerable situation, they need outside help. You know, when I see their face, the, all the situations, it reminds me that my life as a refugee in China, I suffered more than 10 years in China. The refugees need help, especially Syrian refugees, all refugees, like including North Koreans, to come to get the freedom. We are to get to South Korea or they get to European countries. They had to risk their life. You know, they had to give up everything to come to this dreamland. As you can see, there's many people dying, you know, all the way coming. Same as North Korean defectors, there are people dying and they after they caught in China and then they repatriate in North Korea after that they will be imprisoned, tortured and sometimes even will be in public execution. So the law distinguishes uh, between uh, those who leave their country for economical reasons and those uh, who leave home because of war or uh, dictatorship. What do you think? Do you give importance to this difference? Yeah, I know, because um, North Korean defectors, after escaping North Korea, in China we were considered as illegal economic migrants. But we are refugees, because the difference is we are not came to, you know, uh, normal countries. North Korean government, they are, as a North Korean, we are not allowed to leave the country at all. We never saw passport in our life. We are so oppressed, we are so brainwashed. In the big picture, you know, we are all refugees. That's my point. I'm sure that in your childhood, there are also sweet memories. I want to start with those. What do you remember about you as a kid? It's really funny to say this, but I think most memories from North Korea, my childhood was happy. We don't, didn't know there's a different life. We never tasted what it looked like, freedom or democracy or capitalism. So I thought the life we had in North Korea was the most, you know, happiness. Really proud of living in that country until our first dictator, Kim Il-sung, died. Because at that time, we were seriously brainwashed. And then in the end, I believed that the dear leader was a god. I even believed He didn't even go to the bathroom and smoke or drank echoes. But in 1994, the first dictator Kim Il-sung died. At that time, I slowly I was awakening. Maybe he was some human like me. Another happy moment was, uh, again, like uh, whenever we, you know, received a gift, I received a gift from my parents. Even that moment, I didn't thank it to my parents. But instead of a thank to them, but I just uh, holding the gift and then I just bow to the dear little picture and I said thank you so much to give me this beautiful gift. But I believed all the good things, you know, all from the God. One beautiful memory was uh, as a child, we had a picnic every year on the children's day. 
And it was a really beautiful memory to me playing all with my friends, classmates together. During picnic, we had a game. Most of the game was uh, about against America, about killing American soldiers or stabbing American soldiers, or we practiced that throwing out the bombs to you know America. So every game we played mostly just attack America or just all brainwashed the game. We played really horrible games, but since I didn't know there was horrible games, so we were happy that <laughs> it's crazy actually. Let's remain at your childhood. I'm thinking about the illusion in which you have grown. When was the very moment you realized that the world you lived in was an illusion? You know, some people I believe they maybe very small percent of people they maybe know that North Korea is not the right country, but they can't share their ideas openly because uh, you know, we grew up, we saw that we grew up with the constant public executions and the whole family disappeared in the middle of the night after making mistakes by saying wrong things. So people scared and then they couldn't trust each other. The reason I was slowly awakening from the brainwash was uh, because I was living right next to the border with the China and then our television could pick up Chinese TV signals and then it's illegal to watch Chinese TV in North Korea but I did my best and I was hiding in my room and then I was uh, you know blocking the windows with the curtains and with extra thick blankets and I just secretly I watched the Chinese TV but from Chinese TV I saw you know people even die in hell wear jeans you know having necklace rings, everything. Those items are banned in North Korea because it's considered capitalism. In the end, the capitalism will bring society decay. That's what we learned from the regime. So that moment, I feel like a little bit, ah, maybe my country is not the best in the world. From 1997, I saw on the streets, even people dying on the streets. It, it is really shocking that people who died already or dying people on the streets. It's a really horrible memory that as a you know, North Korean citizen at the time, I thought until the moment, you know, people die only in novels or movies, you know. Daytime, I saw people dying on the street, and then at night, I saw from Chinese TV, it's like a brilliant new world. So it doesn't make sense to me. So that's why in the end it made me to cross the border. So I was awakening from the illusion at the time. I ask you to try help me understand what happened. From what kind of experience you ran away and how you made it? To say main point, I really wanted to see as a 17 years girl, the moment I crossed the border, I didn't know I will, that would be the last mini. Maybe I couldn't go back to there in my lifetime. I just I crossed and then from the moment just everything changed. The human rights situation is really horrible. For a North school refugee woman, uh, there's a many Chinese human traffickers as sex slaves or brides to a man in China. I have a weak health problem right now because living in China all the time, you know, it's nervous, you know, like when I, whenever I see Chinese police cars running on the street, I feel like uh, the cars, the police cars coming up to me, so I'm just, uh, you know, the chilly feeling from head to the feet. And then you have to tell me, tell myself, I will be okay. Then exactly, I'm traveling a lot right now with passports, many countries, but again, same feeling even today. Whenever I'm standing in the, you know, security section at the airport, I still have the same feeling like a, my heart is beating so fast. So I think this is a, like a trauma that I can't erase in my lifetime ever. I think you can understand a person discovering what is fun for him or for her. What do you enjoy? Uh, what makes you laugh? Uh, Wow, this is a very unique question I've ever got. What makes me laugh? I don't 
cry or usually I don't smile, I don't laugh because it's really sad that the environment I grew up and then I was suffered a lot as a refugee so it changed all my mood, the tears, crying, it's like disappeared from me because uh, I was crying so many years living in China to look for my family, everything, the hardships. But it, it is really hard for me crying right now. It, like for me, the tears all dry off, it's disappeared. And then yeah, hard for me laugh. Always I'm pressured with life. I mean, to all my attention was to survive, to keep going, you know. When other people are taking break or when they are enjoying watching movies or spending time with friends, whatever, I don't have that spare time. I had to do many things to, to have a successful life and then especially I didn't learn a lot of things as a North Korean because the regime, you know, taught very ridiculous things, not really useful information. So that's why I just wasted all my life about the education. I'm just uh, trying to learn the outside world, a lot of things. So there's not many time to enjoy myself. But what makes me the most laugh was, uh, you know, actually when I, from four years ago, I was reunited with my family. Her ideas, her thoughts, it really sometimes makes me so laugh. Uh, for example, because she, she was brainwashed serially for almost 60 years living in North Korea. So she believes everything what she saw, what she learned from North Korea is real. When she came to South Korea, anywhere we go right now, there's all traffic congestions, cars stuck in the street, can't move. And then when she saw for the first time, she just, wow, it is real. So she couldn't believe that was real. She believed that that was a fake. And then the, another thing was, you know, when she saw for the first time her life ATM machine, the the cash machine, because in North Korea we don't have a banking system. When I f first time, you know, uh, withdrawing the cash from the machine, she couldn't imagine that machine. That is machine. She thought there's a person, human, sitting inside the box, hiding in there, and then the human just counting money. So she said, "Wow." I mean, the man sitting in there all day and without window, and then she said, wow, the person counting money so fast. You know, it's a really, it's actually sad that, you know, in the outside country, people take granted, I mean, for daily technology, everything that we take for granted, but it shows how North screens are terribly, you know, just deprived of everything from North Korea and then whenever she taking bus especially when she step on the escalator she's just scared especially goes down she just couldn't stand there she's just scared to take subway so for one year so for one year she she's scared to go out she makes me sad and then she makes me happy laughing because adding one more you know also what makes me the most laugh was uh, whenever I see those pictures on the internet, like uh, all the dictators, the funny pictures, like uh, somebody made Photoshop, like uh, the old dictator naked body, <laughs> or like uh, you know, they're wearing female dress, something. There's uh, so many, like all they described as a pig. Being in North Korea, as a North Korean citizen, we couldn't even think about that. It's, it's impossible to even see those pictures. As a North Korean citizen, we can't call the, the leader's name without putting any specific titles. So we have to call them like Dear Kim Il Sung, Dear Kim Jong Il, or the most respected. And then even in North Korea, there's people you know who had the same name as the leader. They had to forcibly change their name. It's impossible to have exactly the same name as the dictator has. So we are completely oppressed under the regime. So. Whenever I see those uh, cartoons that describe the funny images about our dictators, I like uh, I feel like uh, releasing all my stress. How do you see yourself uh, in ten years, yourself and uh, uh, the North uh, Korea? Well, um, I think 
I will keep studying because uh, in North Korea I didn't learn that much about the outside world. I'm going to keep continuing to fight with the regime and then I will keep continuing to raise a voice, raising awareness for North Korean people and North Korean defectors. And that's maybe even in 10 years that will be my goal. For me, you know, to foresee the future about North Korea. It is actually difficult how to guess, but in my opinion, um, we had separated for so long. We suffered too much in the separation, and then I believe it's time to end. And then also I believe tyranny can't last forever.